What's up, everybody? It's your boy True Element Seventy Eight in the building with your one and only reigning, defending Mondo Lucha Hall of Famer, the X Man Xavier Mustafa, and this is the infamous one, ready for my in ring return, but not ready or excited for this pay per view. It is I, the natural Chris Black. And today is Saturday, March 7, 2020, and you're tuned into Saturday Night Slamcasters here on the YouTube channel. Today we're here to give you guys our Elimination Chamber predictions, and we're going to try to keep this as short as possible. Hopefully WWE does the same with this pay-per-view, because it, quite frankly, is just taking up space right now. It's just, they don't seem to give a damn about it. I don't really seem to give a damn about it. We don't really seem to give a damn about it. Nobody really cares about this pay-per-view. It used to be that fast lane was a speed bump before WrestleMania. And this right here, I don't even know if you can even consider it a speed bump. Would this be more of a pothole? It's yes. Like, yes. It's like a sinkhole. It was a sinkhole before <laughs> WrestleMania. An inconvenience. This pay-per-view just feels like an inconvenience to the WWE towards <laughs> them getting to WrestleMania. If you even look at it, the head, the the main event is booked already, so that's why Roman Reigns wasn't on SmackDown. Goldberg wasn't on SmackDown. They had the segment between Drew McIntyre and Brock Lesnar on the Go Home Show, but that nope. like it was an interaction. But you know, like everybody that's involved in WrestleMania that, that who has a storyline set weren't involved on any of the of the shows this week. So, looking at this card. Outside of maybe the hell, the elimination chamber matches, and even that could be debatable. All of these matches could be on Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. That's how little of importance these matches are. Yeah, and speaking of which, we can start off with the first match. I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be the kickoff show. We're going to have Daniel Bryan taking on Drew Gulak, which Drew Gulak has basically been trolling Daniel Bryan over the past several weeks, talking about he has holes in his game and presenting him with PowerPoint presentations and giving other competitors well trying to help other competitors get a competitive edge over Daniel Bryan. So now finally he gets to put all of those pie charts and graphs to the test against Daniel Bryan in the ring. Who is your pick to win this match, Xavier Mustafa? This is a tough one for me because I think this is actually gonna be one of those sleeper matches that's gonna actually be awesome. Um I would like to see Drew Gulak come out with a W, but we all know it's gonna be Daniel Bryan. So I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan. I am actually going to have to go against what you're saying. I think I think Daniel Bryan and Drew Gulak, Drew, uh, Drew Gulak is going to be, like you said, one of those sleeper matches that's probably going to be really good. I thought they would save this match for WrestleMania. And I think they're going to let Drew Gulak go over in some form or fashion, whether it be dirty or something or some kind of swerve. And they're going to continue this match till WrestleMania. And Daniel Bryan will get the win there. Because as of right now, Daniel Bryan isn't really scheduled to do anything for Mania. I've heard rumors about another match with Sheamus to get back from that embarrassing loss he had a couple years ago. But I'm going with Drew Gulak. I can't say his name today. Gulak. I'm going to go with Drew Gulak just because I want to see him go up the card a little bit. Daniel Bryan kind of needs the win though to kind of stay relevant he pretty much has been on the back burner but also feel like this would be one of those things where we all know wwe is petty daniel bryan never wants to go to saudi arabia so he may just do the job here to drew gulak which will ele elevate drew gulak i don't think that it necessarily hurts daniel bryan but i don't think that it elevates daniel bryan at all well we know it won't elevate daniel bryan at all so i don't know i i Drew Gulak has more to gain, and I think they could get more mileage out of this feud if Drew Gulak wins. Like you said, he doesn't have any plans set in stone just yet for WrestleMania. Next up, we got a match that I feel like another one of WWE's petty moments will happen in this match. You're going to have the United States champion Andrade taking on Humberto Carrillo in his fourth or fifth opportunity at the United States Championship. Andrade, Andrade did just return from a wellness policy violation suspension for 30 days. So do we think Humberto Carrillo is going to win the United States Championship here at this time? Um, we'll go with the natural Chris Black first. <laughs> Hell no, Humberto Carrillo is not winning this match. I think Andrade is going to go over. Um, but I think it's because 
Um, this might be one of those matches where there's no winner, possibly, because I think Garza and Rey Mysterio might somehow get involved. And I think the direction they're going is a four-way at WrestleMania between the Latino gentlemen. I thought their tag team match on Raw was amazing. Rey Mysterio, Angel Garza, Humberto Carrillo, and Andrade. And Angel Garza, I know we were down on him on our last podcast episode. I felt like over the past two weeks, he's really started to come back out of his shell and showing what he could actually do on the main roster. So I've been very impressed with him. And if all of this was meant to get Humberto over, I feel like they have done a terrible job at that. I feel like everyone has been elevated in this Latino feud besides Humberto, and it has shown his limitations. For that reason, I'm going to go with Andrade. Even though I feel that WWE can be petty, I don't think that it's the right decision to put the title on Humberto Carrillo because no one cares about this guy at this moment. Yeah, you can't put over shit, so Humberto won't be winning. I just want this feud to be over. <laughs> I'm just so tired of just the, the three of them. I'm not even including Rey Mysterio in this. I'm just so over the three of them, like, having these pointless matches every week. Like, somebody win and let it be over. I'm going to go with Andrade. I don't foresee them putting it on Humberto Del Rio uh, unless they put it on him, just put it on somebody else really quickly. But, I mean, it will be he wins it on Sunday, he loses it on Monday type situation. <laughs> Anything longer than that, I'm not buying. <laughs> next so, up, Andrade. Next up, we got AJ Styles taking on Aleister Black in a no disqualification match after the burial of Aleister Black on Monday Night Raw. And I'm going to, and I try not to use that word lightly, but I feel that that was just a burial. They just made Aleister Black look dumb. And it they handed him his first loss since coming to the main roster. I I just want to comment on that. I don't, I wouldn't call that a burial. I think I've heard people complain, but to be, let's, let's, but to be fair, he had a match against two other guys before his match with AJ, and then they beat the hell out of him, and then AJ got the win. So, yeah, I can see why WWE just want to give him a loss just to get it out the way. Um, I don't think it was a burial, though. Like, if he would have just lost to AJ Styles just clean one-on-one -on -one match without the two matches well, beforehand, I would agree with you. Well, him. technically, he won one match. Then they did the bait and switch again. And Luke Gallows was basically disqualified, or it was a no contest, pretty much the same thing we saw at Hell in a Cell. He was whooping too much ass, so he <laughs> lost the match. And so, so the referee bailed him out, and then AJ Styles gets in there, and AJ Styles wins. I understand that there's a big asterisk next to it, but I don't think that it made Alistair Black look like the most intelligent. Well, person. And, don't get me wrong. And also, I didn't it feel didn't make him look good at all. And, and also, didn't feel sympathetic for him. So, to me, like, there's one thing when you can kind of relate or maybe feel some sympathy for the guy or the person that's being put in this position. I think this all just lasted longer than it needed to be. Maybe that's the reason I feel like it was a burial. If this had a, been a quicker segment and not gone for like 20 minutes and it just been a big waste of time, maybe it would have been something. I feel like we're never going to get the the climax for the whole Alistair Black. I feel like they've been building him up, and the loss to AJ Styles just kind of, like, killed his momentum. And so, again, this being a no disqualification match, it also doesn't make him look smart unless he beats the entire club or whatever they call themselves now, the OC. Which, again... I... <sighs> Anderson and Gallows have already, like, the the shine is worn off on them a long time ago. They really aren't going to be moving up or down the card. AJ at this point, I feel like he's just going through the motions. And this is all basically to get him to an Undertaker match possibly at WrestleMania. So I really don't know what to expect out of this match I feel like Alistair Black is just in the way of what AJ is meant to be doing and the only reason AJ's name is even on his card is because like I said the Brock Lesnar's the Goldberg's the Roman Reigns all of those guys aren't on his card and so they needed a name and so AJ Styles is on his card 
and this isn't going to do anything to help Alistair Black. With that being said, uh, AJ has to win. Either that or it's going to be a fuck finish where Undertaker gets involved in the middle of the match, which again, I don't, it doesn't help Alistair Black's case. So this is one of those things where they book themselves into a corner. So Alistair Black wins by disqualification. Yeah, they've definitely booked themselves in a corner because I'm going to go with AJ Styles for the victory because um, the whole the fact that it's a no disqualification match gives AJ the advantage oh. with uh, the club. Actually, that's that's my bad. I meant to say AJ wins by disqualification. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, here's the thing. So AJ Styles uses Aleister Black as a stepping stone to get to Undertaker. Okay, so what about Aleister Black now? Is he just dead in the water? Does he not have any big plans for WrestleMania? It doesn't look like it. So, unfortunately, um, at Aleister Black's expense, AJ Styles is going over, and Aleister Black's going nowhere for Mania. AJ Styles wins. Aleister Black and the fans lose. So sad. Next up, we got... The Street Profits as the Raw Tag Team Champions taking on Seth Rollins and Murphy. Street Profits won the titles due to interference by Kevin Owens. They basically did the Mick Foley winning the World Championship angle where he came out and stunned The Rock so that mankind could pin The Rock for his first WWE champ or WWF championship at the time. So on this episode of Monday Night Raw, um, Seth Rollins was stunned by Kevin Owens. Uh, Montez Ford hit his huge frog splash and they ended up winning the Raw Tag Team Championship since they won it on Monday night. I feel like they retain here and then they have a rematch at WrestleMania because Seth Rollins doesn't have anything going on for WrestleMania. I hope Seth Rollins is off WrestleMania. I hope Seth Rollins retires after this title match. I am so over Seth Rollins. That dude is super being exposed right now. Dude is boring. I'm so over this Monday Night Messiah crap. It's Dude, lame. I love the gimmick. I love the gimmick. <laughs> it's lame. Nobody cares. Just, just put a fork in it. It's done. Street Profits <laughs> are probably going to lose. The titles are probably going to go back on uh, on Seth Rollins and them, just so they can feud with them for eighteen thousand more weeks. And nobody else can get over because they're not going to put over a regular tag team. They're going to keep putting two people, random people together and have them win the tag titles because that's what the WWE likes to do. Another match where the fans ultimately lose. Okay. So, this is one of those matches where... Okay, so it's hard to pick winners in this this pay-per-view because I'm thinking... Where is it going towards WrestleMania? But I got to stop thinking that way because WWE doesn't think that way. But, okay, so if the Street Profits win, who are they going to feud with that Mania? And if Seth Rollins and Murphy wins, who are they going to feud with? I don't want, I do not want to see another rematch with the Street Profits. And I actually think that Seth Rollins is going to go up against Kevin Owens at WrestleMania. Um, So... I want to go with the Street Profits for the win, but just because WWE is is just silly, I'm beginning to think that Rollins and Murphy is going to re, is going to retain for the simple fact that Street Profits don't really have any feuds with anybody else, with any other tag teams that they can build. I can't even think of any heel tag teams that they could even go up against at WrestleMania. So I almost have to give the win to Rollins and Murphy. So I'm going with them. And so then the Raw Tag Team titles don't get defended at WrestleMania. That's your prediction, too? Pretty much. They have way too many titles already. I don't think the tag titles, they're in, none of the tag titles are any main storylines that's even worth being covered at WrestleMania. It was kind well, of, let's see. Go ahead. Oh, now, I was sitting back and I was thinking about the Monday Night Messiah and his little click, and I was like, this is Seth Rollins years ago when he was with Triple H, he was corp- corporate Seth. Like, he, it was pretty much corporation. Now, like, it's Ministry of Darkness Light. AOP are the Acolytes. And I guess that would make Buddy Murphy Midian. <laughs> it's almost like he's the 
straight edge society light. Like he's kind of being the Messiah CM Punk. He's like channeling his inner CM Punk, except for the whole shave your head thing. And CM Punk was way better as a heel than he would ever be. And more believable no as a heel than he would ever be. But he also had a, you got to also give it to him. He had a very easy pickings with the straight edge society, with the people he ended up feuding with. Jeff Hardy and CM Punk with the straight edge society. That was, that was just easy, easy money. But you got to admit, Seth Rollins is, I mean, look who he's surrounded himself with. No, no, nothing, no shots against Murphy. Because we all know he did an amazing job when he was a cruiserweight champ. But I just, I do not like Token Razar or whatever the names are. <laughs> Ackham and Razar. Yeah, there you go. Ackham and Razar. <laughs> so if for some reason they keep the titles on the straight profit, you know what they're going to do, right? Oh. It's going to be a 10-man tag. It's going to be them, the OC trash, Viking the Viking Raiders, Raiders trash, and then who, whatever random tag teams they can put, it'll probably be, um, uh, what's what's the, how Aiken and Bazaar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be those two guys. It'll probably be Michael Cole and Jerry King Lawler. <laughs> It'll probably be <laughs> just random ass teams in a big ass tag team match. Urban Horseman gonna interfere in that match. Right. <laughs> That'll be the best thing to happen to the WWE right now. But then they'll split us up because you know we can't be a real tag team. Then Keith right. Lee will come out and spirit bomb you, and you know that's how we get that feed. This man will cut your name just down to Mustafa. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, no, I'll be cool with that. He'll cut it down. Like, huh? They'll be like, Ali, we were taking your first name and giving it to this guy. <laughs> no, no, see, this is what they'll do. They'll cut it down. They will cut it down to Mustafa. They should cut it down to Mustafa, which will be great. But no, they'll keep Xavier. They'll be like, oh, you're going to be Xavier now. And I'll be like, really? Now they're going to be like, you're Mr. X now. And everybody's like, Resident Evil. That's too no, That's too close to Xavier Woods, so you wouldn't be Xavier. They'd probably keep the X-Man gimmick. <laughs> Mr. X, I told you that'd be his name. <laughs> he, he'll, no, no, then, you'll be a, then you'll be a Muslim. And then they'll have one dressing like Mr. Hughes. <laughs> all right so um yes yeah, so, so we all picked well no we all didn't pick you guys said seth and murphy i said the street profits next up we got the handicap match intercontinental champion braun Strowman taking on shinsuke nakamura cesaro and Sami Zayn. I, they haven't even explained the rules is it whoever pins braun Strowman becomes the intercontinental champion i would actually yeah like, I would actually like to see Cesaro win this. Okay. The WWE, just because they are really good at fucking up uh, a guarantee thing, they're going to bury Nakamura, Cesaro, and Sami Zayn. Now, I don't know how you guys felt about Sami Zayn's promo, um, SmackDown. I thought it was amazing with the NWO. However, they're going to bury these guys. Because for some odd reason, they think Braun Strowman is a big deal, and he's not. And he doesn't even look right with the Intercontinental title. But for some odd reason, they're going to keep the title on him. My picks for Braun Strowman, unfortunately. I'm picking Braun Strowman for all the reasons you just laid out. <sighs> I, 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 I really could flip a coin on this. I don't know if it's just because I don't give a damn. But most of it is because I don't give a damn. But let's go with Braun Strowman on this one. I, I will say, as an asterisk, if Braun Strowman loses, Sami Zayn will get the pin and the belt. That will actually be a great idea. So then we go to a fatal four-way at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental oh Championship. Know. And Cesaro gets his oh, WrestleMania moment. Yeah, that's true because that means he has to defend it. And then Cesaro wins the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania. I'd love for Cesaro to win, but WWE's never want to put him over. Hmm. If it's not Cesaro, then Sami Zayn will be my second pick. Yeah. Then next up, we got the replacement match for what was supposed to be the men's singles in the elimination chamber match that Roman Reigns was supposed to win, but WWE is like, "Hey, you guys are so fucking smart. We're just gonna go straight to I'm next." 
Mr. Roman Reigns taking on Goldberg. So we got the SmackDown Tag Team Championships being defended inside the Elimination Chamber. The champions, Miz and Morrison, taking on the New Day, taking on Heavy Machinery, taking on Rudolph, which is Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler, taking on the Usos. The Miz and John Morrison have not been able to buy a win on television since winning the Tag Team Championships. And Heavy Machinery went the distance almost in the gauntlet match on SmackDown. They came up short by losing to Rudolph, Dolph Ziggler, and Bobby Roode. So Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode will be entering into the chamber match last. Who is your pick to win this match? I... Who's all in it again? You have Ms. Morrison, The New Day, These The Usos, nuts. Heavy Machinery, Lucha House Party, seriously? Oh, yeah. Dolph did. Ziggler yeah, and Robert that. Rude. Yeah, I did not say Lucha House Party. In a perfect world, give it to Robert Rude and Dolph Ziggler. I know that's not going to happen unless the hell freezes over. But that who, that's who I personally would like to win. I think that will give them a purpose because they're both great workers and wrestlers, especially Bobby Roode. And I think that's what they need to, to, to do is, is keep them moving forward. But it will probably either be kind of all over the place with this, I know. But I think they'll probably keep it on Miz and them. Miz and them. Uh but I feel like they might put it back on the New Day or the Usos, because I don't feel that like, I don't feel like the Miz and them are as over as they want them to be. I but then, that. do they do that again? Because they each been twenty times World Tag Team Champions. Well, I say the Usos coming back from suspension. I don't think they're winning it. New Day, New Day needs something, but it's not the tag team titles. And Heavy Machinery and Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler kind of cancel each other out. And I think we're heading towards the Otis and Dolph Ziggler blow off at WrestleMania, hopefully. So I think Miz and Morrison retain. Okay. So I was thinking Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode would win. And then Heavy Machinery. Okay, basically Heavy Machinery and Dolph Ziggler, Robert Roode, somehow they're going to be involved at WrestleMania. Now if the tag team titles aren't involved, that's another thing. But if one of them wins then the Miz and Morrison truly are is just a dead team because, like you said, they've lost twice now, clean, in the middle of, this, in the middle of the ring, on television, as champs. So, unless they plan on breaking Miz and Morrison up and having them feud, oh, God, this is a hard one to call. I think Miz and Morrison retain going to WrestleMania and they face the Usos for the tag team titles. I... <sighs> Uh, I guess I'll go with the Miz and Morrison just because if they lose, there was no point in them winning the belts. God, are we finna go into the worst WrestleMania in history? Dude, I think I said that earlier before we hopped on. <laughs> it it really I, is. It's going know, to be a shit show. I know yes, uh, yesterday. I know last year's almost was going that route, but they, they pulled the nose up on that in the last minute. I don't know if they can do that this year. I'm so uninterested. They can't. No, I there's, think, there's I don't think, no I don't saving think, WrestleMania. See, I don't think that we're headed towards the worst WrestleMania. The majority of matches are already set. It's going to be all the stuff that they just hot shot for no damn reason to shoehorn onto a WrestleMania card so everyone can get a payday. But, again, we might not be headed into an actual WrestleMania if this coronavirus shit continues to take hold <laughs> over uh, the nation. So... You know what, Vince McMahon, he would be so lucky if they had to cancel WrestleMania because as it stands right now, I don't give a damn who's on the card. Goldberg, John Cena, it's going to be the shits because none of these matches mean a damn thing. I know Vince McMahon had an issue with keeping the numbering system on WrestleMania. This year, he won't have to worry about it because it'll be Corona Mania, baby. Running wild. Correction, Randy Orton. And Edge, that is the only match I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to Drew McIntyre and Brock Lesnar. I'm not because I'm convinced Brock Lesnar's going to retain. Uh, I'm looking for I'm looking for the COVID nineteen being the biggest heel in the building and shutting it down. Bigger heel than MJF flipping off a kid. <laughs> 
Nothing's greater than him flipping off a kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, next up, we got the match that I... You, you think you know the winner, but then then you get the reports that Vince McMahon has soured on the person who you think is supposed to win. I and, think that's a work. And we'll get into it. But um, you got the Women's Elimination Chamber match to find out who's going to go on to WrestleMania and face Becky Lynch. So you got Natalia, Liv Morgan, Shayna Baszler, Asuka, Ruby Riot, and Sarah Logan. Like I said, with the winner going on to face Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. All reports have been saying that Vince did not like the match that Shayna Baszler had with Kyrie Sane on this past week's Monday Night Raw. And so he's starting to sour on Shayna Baszler and doesn't feel like she is a WrestleMania main eventer. My comment on that is that the women aren't main eventing WrestleMania this year. So I don't know where you're getting WrestleMania main eventer from. You put her in a terrible position where Shayna Baszler is a heel. Kyrie Sane is also a heel. So you had a heel on heel dynamic in that match. Also, the original match was supposed to be Shayna Baszler versus Asuka. And you pulled another bait and switch on the fans. So what did you expect? Or what was the reaction you were expecting from viewers and fans to actually get invested into this match? Plus, you have the entire distraction of Elton John on commentary. Lord. Okay. So... Uh, I think that the whole Vince McMahon has soured on Shayna Baszler. I think that's a work. I don't. I don't believe that. I'm not gonna say I don't believe it at all. I mean, there could be some truth in that. And if he has soured on Shayna Baszler, uh, I can see Oscar picking up the win. However, and everyone who's who knows how I feel about Shayna Baszler, about just she's probably one of the top women right now, in my opinion. Um. I have not been impressed with her on any of her main roster work. And I don't know if it's because of nerve, if she's, I don't know, taken aback by being in a larger crowd. Shayna's lost something since she left NXT. And I am not, I'm, I'm really not looking forward to a match between Shayna Baszler and Becky Lynch. I'm just not. If they let Asuka win this match, but her and Becky can have their, their rubber match. And that actually might be a little more story to tell. And I can see Asuka getting the victory because Becky Lynch is just supposed to take some time off. And then maybe Asuka and Shayna Baszler will feud. But then what happens to the women's tag team titles, which they don't mean shit anyway. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do a little activity <laughs> around this whole you don't think you think that's the work with Vince McMahon, okay? I want I want you and the viewers at home or the viewers, the listeners at home, close your eyes for a moment and just picture the queen coming down to the ring, making her entrance, all right? And then picture Oscar coming down the ring, making her entrance. Now think about Becky Lynch coming down to the ring and making her entrance. Don't do it. So you got those in your mind? Now picture Shayna Baszler coming down to the ring making her entrance. Shayna Baszler. That's, Shana Baszler. that's where Vince McMahon is not getting the star from because she does not come off as a star. Shayna Baszler and Samoa Joe have the same entrance, just so you guys know. No, so we'll see Samoa Joe, hold on. Samoa Joe, when he comes down to the ring, even his even his interest music, like everything about him is like, I'm finna come and I'm finna whoop some ass. Shayna Baszler, not so much. She look like she gonna whoop some ass, but her music is trash. She she doesn't have the star power. That's why I, I believe that to be true. Oh. I am going to go with you, Chris Black, though. I would like them to see uh, see Oscar win for the same reasons that you named, because you kind of throw my thunder. Throw my, throw my thunder, <laughs> but that's fine. I'm, I'm going to co-sign with you on that one. I think it should be Asuka and Becky. I think that match sells more tickets than Shayna Baszler and her. It all depends on what they plan to do with Ronda Rousey. But I'm She should be, to be honest, if she came back, that's the money, money match. If she comes back to avenge her loss at WrestleMania against Becky Lynch, that makes sense. Her but taking you know the belt from Becky Lynch and putting her in a submission hold where she can't come back so she can take this time off 
is money. Which... Well, okay. Now looking at looking at this lineup of women that's supposed to be in this match, I almost had a thought after you said that, what if she replaces somebody? But I don't think WWE would waste not promoting her coming back. But see, the good thing about that is if they do that, that would be the same route that Becky Lynch took to get to WrestleMania, which would make sense. Because Becky Lynch was an add-on to the WrestleMania because somebody got injured. Well, they got their ass kicked, and then they couldn't get in the ring. So, they, you know, Becky Lynch was like, hey, I'm here. Can I do it? So they they both were parallel. Their journeys were parallel. Everything is making can make this nice full circle into an epic WrestleMania could be main event. And a person that doesn't really belong, like you could say Liv Morgan or Sarah Logan, but I would say if anybody was going to be replaced by Ronda Rousey, it's going to be Natalia. Oh, my God. I wish I could drive to Connecticut right now. And then you get a story. And slap Vince in the face and say, make this happen. And, it, <laughs> and then later on down the line, you have the story because, you know, Ronda Rousey and Natalia, she trained Ronda Rousey. You just see Ronda Rousey. See the tire in the back, like I don't know what happened. Somebody came out of nowhere. They hit me in the leg with a pipe. I can't go. I can't go. And the match starts, and you get Ronda Rousey out there taking her spot. So, okay, because then if Ronda Rousey, then, oh hold on, because then that leads to then you got two feuds in there for Ronda Rousey headed after beating Becky Lynch. Since like I said. It's already been announced Becky's going to be taking some time off. So then if you do that, you got the feud with Natalia and you possibly got a feud with Shayna Baszler and possibly a feud with Asuka before Becky can come back. Right. Now, if Ronda Rousey is going to make a return, um, I, 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 thinking about that made me think about asking you guys, so what? what's main event in this shit pay-per-view? Drew McIntyre. Nah. Drew. I don't think it'll be Goldberg or Roman. No, 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 no. I'm talking about this shit show, the Elimination oh. Chamber. The women. The women. Then Ronda Rousey could possibly save this whole fucking show if she shows up. Yeah, that's the only say saving too. grace. Think about it. That's the only saving grace in this entire pay per view. Is if Ronda Rousey shows up in that main event. I just want to say, Vince McMahon, I really would have slapped you in the face. I was just joking. <laughs> I'll probably ring your doorbell late at night and you know, suggest you know this angle, but I wouldn't slap you in the face. So don't take me seriously. Hire me. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, you guys got anything else to say about the show? That's it. But you know what? I will say WWE has surprised us before going into it. We think the pay-per-view is going to be shit, and they turn it around. But let's see. I hope that I hope that I hope that's what happens. I don't want to waste three hours on a Sunday night watching trash. Three but hours. But that's probably what I'm. Three hours. What you you? That's wishful thinking. Three hours. Well, you know. What do you think this is? An in your house? <laughs> <laughs> Four or five hours, baby. I mean, you got The Walking Dead tomorrow, all kind of stuff, you know. I ain't got to, hmm. Nobody watch that shit. No Walking more. Dead, anyway. that's going to be the crowd. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead and give out your... Uh, actually, you know what? Church announcements real quick. You got any church announcements? Uh, Legacy Pro Wrestling will be returning to the Root River Center on April 10th. Uh, one of the matches is going to be, hopefully, if Chris Black has gotten all of the sand out of his vagina, he will be taking on Devin August, who called him out at the last show for being quote-unquote sick after the show that he attacked him after his match. So he's ready. He is chomping at the bits to get his hands on Chris Black and defend his Next Generation Championship. We also... After the results of Angel Armani taking the coward's way out and getting a DQ um, against Brown Sugar, it's going to be a three-way between Brown Sugar, uh, um, Angel Armani, and the returning, um, why am I forgetting names, Sean Priest. Um, so those are the two matches already signed. We're going to have R.E.D., uh, they're going to be challenging the Caribbean Connections, who are the current tag team champions right now. And uh, those are the matches that are already signed for the event. So you can get your tickets at LegacyProWI.com or you can get your tickets at Facebook.com forward slash LegacyProWI. All right. 
Well, the only news that I got to share is, yeah, Mustafa, the the, the sand is, is slowly leaving the vagina. <laughs> um, in 10 days, hopefully, my doctor will be clearing me. I'm almost 100% sure that I will be cleared because my eye is just seeming pretty fine. I'm sure I got a little bit of squiggle still here and there, but it's been it's been recovering as kind of as scheduled. Um, other than that, um, again, I just can't wait to get back into the ring. Um, Podcast-wise, I'm thinking about throwing up some individual videos. I was talking to my two co-hosts here saying, I don't know, maybe you fans, if you would be interested in, I don't know, hearing my thoughts on why WrestleMania is going to be just garbage, 100% just garbage. And I'll go through every single match and why all those matches are garbage. <laughs> it's bad booking. Period. All right. Other than that, you guys want to give us social medias? You can catch me at Xavier Mustafa on Facebook and on Twitter. You can catch me at The Natural Chris Black on Facebook and Instagram and at The underscore Natural underscore CB on Twitter. And of course, you've already found us over on YouTube. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. And hit that bell so you get our notifications and give us a thumbs up if you'll be so kind and leave us a comment if you'll also be even kinder. You can find me at Slamcaster TE78 over on Twitter. And you can find us wherever you get your podcast from. Just search Saturday Night Slamcasters or hashtag come get slam. We'll be coming to you guys with another official podcast. It's gonna be released on our podcast network, and that's gonna be dropping for you guys on March. 14th 2020 so be sure to stay tuned for that we will not be doing a review of the elimination chamber an official review that will be a part of the podcast episode natural chris black what you got i got one more thing to say um be sure to check out the Slamcasters page on facebook we do always have our discussions up on every pay-per-view also follow us on twitter because we do live tweet during the pay-per-views yeah. yeah we all um on our individual Twitter pages, live tweet during the pay-per-views. I'm trying to get better at it. The natural Chris Black is definitely the go-to for that, but be sure to follow us all over there on the Twitters, on the tweeters, on all of that good stuff. Twitter than, bill. <laughs> and also, in the future, you guys can look forward to us rev doing reviews of the WWE Aggression Era documentary. You got Dark Side of the Ring getting ready to drop, so that'll probably be a series that we begin reviewing for you guys beginning in May. Those will probably be dropping in May. Rufus Aggression will be dropping in April for you guys. Other than that, thank you guys for continuing to support us. Be sure to share our content with people you think that will be interested in listening to us. And other than that, holla at your boys. Come get slammed. We up out of here. Peace. <laughs>